now we will derive property relations for rayleigh flow so first one is what will be t not 2 stagnation temperature at state 2 we know from the energy equation q equals cp into t not 2 minus t not 1 so if q is given we can find out what will be t not 2 secondly we will find out pressure ratio p2 by p1 this is our momentum equation p1 plus rho1 u1 square equals p2 plus rho2 u2 square now we know that speed of sound a square equals gamma p by rho implies rho equals gamma p by a square so we can put rho1 as gamma p1 by a1 square and rho2 as gamma p2 by a2 square so our momentum equation will become gamma p1 u1 square by a square equals p2 plus gamma p2 into u2 square by a2 square now u by a is mark number so p1 plus gamma p1 m1 square equals p2 plus gamma p2 m2 square this implies p2 by p1 equals 1 plus gamma m1 square divided by 1 plus gamma m2 square this is our pressure ratio p2 by p1 equals 1 plus gamma m1 square divided by 1 plus gamma m2 square next we will derive t2 by t1 now from the equation of state p equals rho rt we know that t2 by t1 will be equal to p2 by p1 into rho1 by rho2 from the equation of state p equals rho rt and in this equation we can put rho1 by rho2 as u2 by u1 u2 by u1 from continuity equation which is rho1 u1 equals rho2 u2 we can multiply and divide this equation by a1 by a2 into a2 by a1 equation will become p2 by p1 into u2 by a2 is m2 and u1 by a1 is m1 into now we know that a2 is under root gamma r t2 under root gamma r t2 and a1 is under root gamma r t1 so finally our equation will become gamma r gamma r will cut out and under root t2 by t1 will also cut out our equation will become t2 by t1 p2 by p1 into m2 by m1 implies p2 by t1 m2 square by m1 square into p2 by p1 square and we have already derived p2 by p1 which is 1 plus gamma m1 square divided by 1 plus gamma m2 square whole square so this is our temperature ratio t2 by t1 next we will derive density ratio rho2 by rho1 from the equation of state rho2 by rho1 will become p2 by p1 into t1 by t2 we already know what is p2 by p1 p2 by p1 is 1 plus gamma m1 square by 1 plus gamma m2 square 
and what is t1 by t2 it is the reciprocal of this equation meaning m1 square by m2 square multiplied by 1 plus gamma m2 square divided by 1 plus gamma m1 square whole square which will be equal to m1 square by m2 square into 1 plus gamma m2 square divided by 1 plus gamma m1 square so this is density ratio rho 2 by rho 1 now we will derive p02 by p01 now p02 by p01 we can write this as p02 divided by p2 p01 divided by p1 into p2 by p1 now we know what is p2 by p1 from this equation and we know what is the relation between stagnation pressure and static pressure from this equation we can put p02 by p2 as 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m2 square divided by p01 by p1 as 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 into m1 square and we know what is p2 by p1 1 plus gamma m1 square divided by 1 plus gamma m2 square so this is our p02 by p01 and similarly we can also find out what will be t02 by t01 so this will be equal to t02 by t2 divided by t01 by t1 into t2 by t1 we have multiplied and divided this equation by t2 by t1 we already know what is t02 by t2 from the relation between static temperature and stagnation temperature and we have already derived what is t2 by t1 you can calculate this on your own these are property relations of Rayleigh flow as we have derived earlier now for the convenience of calculation we use sonic flow as reference condition we take state 1 as sonic condition and state 2 as any other Mach number m so put m1 equals 1 and m2 equals m in this property relation equations and we will represent sonic state condition with superscript star so our first equation will become p2 is p p divided by p1 is p star equals 1 plus gamma m1 equals 1 divided by 1 plus gamma m2 square m2 is m our t2 is temperature t divided by t1 is at stony condition means t star equals m2 is m square m1 is 1 so 1 1 plus gamma m1 equals 1 divided by 1 plus gamma m2 is m m square whole square similarly rho 2 is rho divided by rho 1 is rho star equals m1 which is 1 1 divided by m square 1 plus gamma m2 is m m square divided by 1 plus gamma and similarly p naught 2 is p naught p naught 1 is p naught star we can find out this and t naught 2 is t naught and t naught 1 is t naught star equals this and these reference sonic conditions are constant values throughout the flow now we will see what is the importance of these reference values now we will understand what t star p star and rho star represents which we have defined as reference conditions 
in the case of relay flow p star p star and rho star are those conditions in one dimensional flow that would exist if enough heat is added to achieve mark number 1 i am repeating it again p star p star and rho star are those conditions in one dimensional flow that would exist if enough heat is added to achieve mark number 1 now remember earlier while discussing characteristic mark number characteristic mark number m star which is velocity divided by characteristic speed of sound a star we defined t star but here in the case of characteristic mark number t star is fundamentally different from this t star of relay flow in the case of characteristic mark number m star t star was defined as temperature that would exist at a point if the flow at that point was imagined to be locally slow down if the flow is supersonic or speeded up if the flow is subsonic to mark number 1 adiabatically to mark number 1 adiabatically i am repeating it again in the case of characteristic mark number t star was defined as temperature that would exist at a point if the flow at that point was imagined to be local slow down if the flow is supersonic or speeded up if the flow is subsonic to mark number 1 adiabatically but in the case of relay flow in the case of relay flow the flow is non adiabatic the flow is non adiabatic and in the case of relay flow t star p star and rho star are defined as those conditions in one dimensional flow that would exist if enough heat is added to achieve mark number 1 enough heat q is added to achieve mark number 1 now let us understand this phenomena by an example consider this is a duct at one the fluid properties are p1 t1 rho1 and mark number 1 m1 is 4 we are adding heat q to the flow and due to this heat addition the outlet condition at two becomes p2 t2 rho2 and mark number m2 equals 2 now t star p star rho star as we have defined are those conditions that would exist if enough heat is added to achieve mark number 1 so consider second figure speaker b take this figure as a now consider only one condition here mark number m1 is equal to 4 now we are adding q1 star amount of heat q1 star amount of heat such that the outlet flow conditions are sonic conditions the outlet flow conditions are sonic condition p star t star and rho star and here mark number m is equal to 1 so here q1 star is the amount of heat which we have to give to the flow to make the flow sonic similarly take condition 2 where m2 is equal to 2 here the fluid properties are p2 t2 and rho2 now we will add some amount of heat q2 star such that the flow at the outlet will become sonic m equal to 1 here the flow properties will be p star t star and rho star So Q1 star is the amount of heat we have to add to the flow to make it sonic, and Q2 star is the amount of heat we have to add to the flow at condition two to make it sonic m equal to one. And in the first figure, Q was the amount of heat that we are adding 
to the flow which is changing flow at mark number equal to 4 to mark number equal to 2 so q1 star q1 star will be equal to q plus q2 star q1 star will be equal to q plus q2 star and q will be equal to q1 star minus q2 star and from here we can find out the amount of heat we have to add to the flow to convert the flow from mark number 4 to mark number 2 and we can calculate this q1 star and q2 star from the reference conditions that we already know and these two reference conditions are same these two reference conditions are same we have defined what is q1 star q1 star is the amount of heat we have to add to this supersonic flow m1 equals 4 to get the downstream conditions m equal to 1 which are sonic conditions but suppose we add heat q greater than q1 star greater than q1 star then what will happen the answer is that any further increase in q any further increase in q beyond q star is not possible without a drastic revision of the upstream conditions in region 1 for example if the initial condition is supersonic m1 equal to 4 the supersonic flow is obtained by expansion of the gas through a converging diverging duct so if this mark number 4 supersonic flow obtained by expansion through a supersonic nozzle and if we add heat which is greater than q1 star then a normal shock then a normal shock will form inside the nozzle normal shock will form inside the supersonic nozzle supersonic nozzle so if we add q beyond q star what will happen there will be a normal shock inside the supersonic nozzle through which we have obtained our supersonic flow at the entrance of the duct now suppose there is a subsonic flow at point 0.1 subsonic flow at point 0.1 now we add heat q greater than q star greater than q star what will happen now we know that normal shock can only exist in case of supersonic flow normal shock can exist only in supersonic flow so what will happen when our flow is subsonic and we add heat beyond q star in this case adding q beyond q star will generate a series of pressure waves a series of pressure waves series of pressure waves which will propagate in the upstream direction and nature will adjust the conditions in region 1 to a lower subsonic Mach number what will happen nature will adjust the condition in region 1 to a lower subsonic Mach number suppose initial our m1 is 0.8 and we add heat q beyond q star what will happen our initial Mach number m1 will reduce m1 will become less than 0.8 we don't know by how much it will reduce but it will be less than 0.8 Mach number 